Fires in industrial settings pose a significant risk to both life and property. The National Fire Protection Association reports tens of thousands of industrial fires per year, leading to multiple deaths, several injuries, and property damages ranging into the billions. And while these statistics might be alarming, they also serve as a reminder of the importance of fire safety knowledge and skills. With a solid understanding and appreciation for fire safety in the workplace, we can minimize the risk of mishaps and prevent them from escalating into catastrophic events, creating a safer work environment for ourselves and our colleagues. In this course, we're going to discuss some essential fire safety topics for keeping your workplace safe, including fire basics like the fire triangle and fire classifications, common fire hazards in industrial settings, conducting a job safety analysis and emergency response, including emergency response plans and using fire extinguishing equipment. Let's get started with some fire basics. Before we dive into fire prevention response, it's important that we understand some fire basics. By knowing what causes fires and the various types of fire classifications, we'll be better equipped to handle a range of fire-related emergencies. First, let's discuss the fire triangle. Now, a fire needs three things to ignite and sustain itself, fuel, heat, and oxygen. Now, a fire can start and continue to burn so long as these three elements are present. Naturally, by removing any one of these elements, we can then extinguish a fire. But not all fires are the same, and the methods used to put out a fire will depend on its particular fire classification. Fires are grouped into five classifications based on the type of fuel or heat source involved. Now, understanding these classifications will help you determine the most appropriate method for extinguishing them. Class A fires are the most common fire classification. These fires involve common combustible materials such as wood, paper, and cloth. Water or dry chemical fire extinguishers are best suited for Class A fires. Now, it's important to note here that only Class A fires should be put out with water, as water may pose additional risk if used to extinguish fires of other classifications. Class B fires are fueled by flammable liquids and gases like propane, oil, or gasoline. Class B fires can spread quickly and easily and should not be extinguished with water. They are best extinguished by smothering with dry chemical extinguisher or removing oxygen with a CO2 extinguisher. It's important to note that Class B fires are distinct from grease or cooking fires, which are categorized separately. Class C fires involve electrical equipment such as power systems, lighting, computers, and appliances. For Class C fires, it's important to use a fire extinguishing method that will not conduct electricity and create an electrocution risk. Therefore, water would again be an inappropriate choice. Class C fires are best extinguished with dry chemical, CO2, or clean agent suppression. Class D fires involve combustible metals such as magnesium or potassium. Now, these fires are relatively rare and require specialized extinguishing agents. You should not try to put out a Class D fire unless specifically trained and authorized to do so. Now, lastly, Class K fires involve cooking oils and fats typically found in kitchens. Class K fires can also spread quickly and are easily made worse by adding water. As such, wet chemical extinguishers are most appropriate for these fires. If you do encounter a fire that you're authorized to extinguish, be sure to check the labeling on the available fire extinguishers to ensure that they're suitable for the type of fire you're dealing with. Now, the labeling should clearly indicate the fire classifications that the extinguisher is designed to handle. In many workplaces, you'll find a multi-purpose ABC dry chemical fire extinguisher. Now, these fire extinguishers are suitable for extinguishing any fire from the most common fire classes, A, B, and C. Now that we understand some fire basics, let's look at a few fire hazards you might come across in an industrial setting. By learning how to quickly identify and address these hazards, we can prevent a fire before it occurs. Now, some common industrial fire hazards include electrical distribution and lighting equipment, 
Hot work, such as welding, cutting and grinding, mechanical friction and overheating equipment, uh, combustible dust, flammable liquids and gas, and careless smoking. Electrical systems are essential for powering machinery and equipment, but they can also be a major source of fires in industrial environments. Examples of potential hazards include overloaded circuits, damaged wiring, and faulty electrical components. Now, this can lead to excessive heat or sparks that can ignite nearby combustible materials. To minimize these risks, ensure proper grounding of all electrical systems to prevent electrical shock. Secure and protect your cables from damage with industrial grade conduits and cable protectors. Avoid overloading a single circuit with multiple devices or power strips. Never rely on extension cords for long-term use as they can deteriorate over time. And conduct regular inspections and maintenance of electrical systems to identify and address issues early. Hot work is any activity that generates flames or sparks such as welding, cutting, or grinding. If not handled properly, these heat sources can easily ignite nearby flammable materials and start a fire. To prevent hot work related fires, maintain a safe distance between hot work and flammable materials. If necessary, use fire resistant barriers or shields to protect nearby materials. A sign of fire watch during hot work operations. Now, this person should be responsible for monitoring the work area for signs of fire or any fire hazards and should be equipped with the appropriate fire extinguishing equipment and training. You should also implement a hot work permit system to ensure all hot work is performed under fire watch by trained and authorized individuals and that appropriate safety measures are in place before any hot work begins. Mechanical friction and overheating equipment, including machinery and heating systems like furnaces, boilers, and space heaters, can generate significant heat igniting flammable materials if not properly maintained. To prevent fires caused by mechanical friction and overheating equipment, be sure to apply appropriate lubricants to reduce friction and heat generation in moving parts. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations for lubricant type and application frequency. Implement temperature controls and monitor equipment temperatures regularly to prevent overheating. Conduct routine inspections and maintenance to prevent malfunctions. Clean combustible debris and replace worn or damaged parts. Enforce good housekeeping practices to maintain a safe distance between equipment and combustible materials. Combustible dust is any combustible material that has been shaved, ground, or processed into fine particles, including wood, paper, textile, fibers, sugar, flour, and even some metals. If your workplace processes create dust or use powders, you might face a combustible dust hazard. Combustible dust might accumulate on surfaces and equipment or become suspended in the air. Now, these fine particles are often more combustible than their solid forms and can easily catch fire. When airborne, they even pose a risk of a dust explosion. To minimize the risk of dust-related fires, you should implement a hazardous dust control housekeeping and inspection program to minimize dust generation and prevent dust buildup both on work surfaces and in the air. And where appropriate, install a dust collection and filtration system to regularly remove airborne combustibles. Flammable liquids and gas can ignite quickly and spread rapidly. These include gasoline and other fuels, cleaning solvents, and other chemical products used or stored in the workplace. Now, improper handling or storage can result in leaks, spills, or vapor release, all of which can easily catch fire if exposed to a source of heat. To minimize the risk of fires involving flammable materials, be sure to store any flammable liquids or gases in approved containers and safety cabinets and kept far away from any ignition sources and emergency exits. Now, safety cabinets should also be clearly labeled with flammable, keep fire away, and always follow the manufacturer's guidelines for safe handling using personal protective equipment as needed when working with these materials. Smoking poses a significant fire hazard in the workplace as carelessly discarded cigarettes and other smoking material can easily ignite nearby combustibles. To prevent smoking related fire hazards, install clear signage such as no smoking or no open flames in areas where smoking is strictly prohibited and clearly communicate these rules with all employees. Establish and enforce designated smoking areas that are well away from any flammable materials, work areas, and storage locations. 
Now, these areas should be clearly marked as smoking areas and be equipped with the appropriate ashtrays and receptacles for extinguishing and disposing of smoking materials. Always ensure cigarettes, cigars, matches, and any other materials are fully extinguished before disposal and only dispose of them in the appropriate receptacles, never with the regular trash. One valuable tool for preventing fires is the job safety analysis, commonly referred to as a JSA. This is a systematic process that helps identify potential safety hazards and develop appropriate safety measures for specific work tasks. In terms of fire safety, conducting a job safety analysis can help you identify any hazardous fuels or materials present, sources of heat or ignition, and any other potentially unsafe work practices. By identifying these risks beforehand, you can implement control measures to minimize the chances of starting an accidental fire. To conduct a job safety analysis, you'll begin by breaking down the job into individual tasks. Now, this can involve a detailed account of all the individual actions taken by a person to complete the task, including everything from preparing and transporting certain tools or materials to turning on and using equipment or any other action taken in the process. You'll then identify and assess any potential hazards associated with each individual task. Uh, to help assess these hazards, you might ask, what can go wrong? What are the consequences? How could it happen? What are other contributing factors? And how likely is it that the hazard will occur? Uh, based on your assessments, you should then develop and implement control measures to minimize the identified risk. Remember, job safety analysis can and should be done regularly for all tasks, updating as needed to maintain its effectiveness and address any changes in the work process or environment. Even with strict safety measures in place, the reality is that fires can still happen. Therefore, it's vital to implement a fire emergency response plan that everyone knows and can follow. Remember, regular practice and familiarity with emergency response plans and equipment can save lives in a fire. In this section, we'll cover the components of an emergency response plan and using appropriate fire extinguishing equipment. First, let's talk about what should be included in your workplace fire emergency response plan. Roles and responsibilities during an emergency should be clearly defined, including what to do if you discover a fire and identifying personnel authorized to use firefighting equipment and administer first aid. Evacuation procedures and escape routes should be established and communicated to all employees. Note that this might include alternative procedures with workers in critical operations. There should be a process for accounting for all employees after an evacuation, including designated assembly areas, and regular training and drills should be conducted to ensure everyone knows their role and the procedures to follow. If you need assistance in developing an emergency response plan for your workplace, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, offers a helpful resource on their website called the Evacuation Plans and Procedures eTool. Now, this free tool provides a user-friendly step-by-step process to guide you in creating a customized plan tailored to your workplace. It's also important to be aware of the exit route requirements as outlined in OSHA Standard 1910 Subpart E. Now, these involve having at least two exit routes located away from each other, ensuring these exits are unobstructed and clearly marked and that exit routes are wide enough for the number of people needed to evacuate. As part of your emergency response, you may be required to use portable fire extinguishers to quickly put out small manageable fires before they grow out of control. Not all employees are authorized to use portable fire extinguishers in an emergency. Familiarize yourself with your workplace's emergency response plan well ahead of time to know whether or not you are authorized to handle a fire extinguisher. If you are authorized to use a fire extinguisher, you should familiarize yourself with all locations and types of fire extinguishers in your workplace. They should be easily accessible and mounted on walls near potential fire hazards. As you already learned, there are five different classifications of fires, which are class A, B, C, D, and K. 
Now, it's important to ensure that you use the correct type of fire extinguisher for the specific class of fire you're dealing with. Before using a fire extinguisher, always double check the label to confirm that it's appropriate for the fire class in question. Then to use the fire extinguisher, follow the pass method. Pull the pin. This will break the tamper seal and allow you to operate the extinguisher. Aim at the base of the fire. Target the source of the flames rather than the flames themselves. Squeeze the handle. This will release the extinguishing agent from the extinguisher and sweep from side to side. Move the nozzle in a sweeping motion to cover the entire base of the fire until it's extinguished. Always remember, portable firefighting equipment is designed for small, manageable fires. If a fire becomes too large or unmanageable, your priority should be to evacuate the area immediately following your workplace's emergency response plan. As we wrap up this course on industrial fire safety, let's take a moment to reflect on the key topics we've covered. We discussed the fire basics, including the fire triangle of fuel, heat, and oxygen, as well as the five different fire classifications and their relevance to extinguishing a fire. We looked at some common fire hazards in industrial settings, including electrical systems, hot work, mechanical friction and overheating equipment, combustible dust, flammable liquids and gas, and appropriate smoking policies. We covered more general fire prevention best practices and how to conduct a job safety analysis. We also discussed the importance of having and regularly practicing a fire emergency response plan, what it should include, and the OSHA requirements regarding exit routes. Lastly, we familiarized ourselves with the proper usage of portable fire extinguishers. By educating yourself on these important fire safety topics, you can now contribute to a safer workplace for yourself and your co-workers. And remember, fire safety is a shared responsibility where everyone plays a vital role.